RF man here. Today I'm going to talk about a different topic. Most of my videos on YouTube focus on amplifiers and linear amplifiers using LDMOS technology. That's on the output side of a ham radio or CB radio. Today I'd like to talk about the receiving side and the components that are used in the receiver. So most receivers today use a super heterodyne type topology. And the main components in there uh, are the RF amplifier, the mixer, and the bandpass filter. In some cases, you might see some frequency dividers and frequency multipliers as well. Um, so I'd like to provide a brief overview of a superheterodyne receiver first and then actually discuss each of those individual circuits in detail and demonstrate those circuits looking at them on the oscilloscope and some of the other test equipment that I have. So this is basically a high level overview of a superheterodyne receiver. Uh, basically you have the antenna you have some filtering on the input, then you have a small signal RF amplifier, a frequency mixer which uses a local oscillator for tuning, and you can see that the tuning on the front end and the tuning of the local oscillator is tied together. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about the mixer and how that works and demonstrate that for you. Then there's an IF amplifier and IF filter. IF stands for intermediate frequency. Uh, typically you down convert the input frequency to an IF frequency where it's easier to filter and easier to amplify. So this could be for example a simple bandpass filter which I will demonstrate in, in one of my future videos. And then we have another amplifier, then the demodulator, and then the audio amplifier driving a speaker. So those are the main components. And what I plan on doing is going through each one of these in separate videos. So this will end up being a four-part video to discuss each of these topics. So the first topic is the RF amplifier, and again, this is a small signal amplifier, a very sensitive amplifier used on the front end of a receiver. Um, and this is the circuit that we're going to be discussing. It uses a mini circuit MMIC, an MAR6+. MMIC is basically a monolithic microwave integrated circuit. Um, th these are quite small devices, which you'll see when I show you the circuit that I built and go through how the circuit performs. Um, so before we go any further, it might be helpful if we take a look at the specification for this device. So bear with me here a minute. So this is the data sheet for the device. As I said, it's a monolithic amplifier. Uh, if we look at some of the features, it works from DC to 2 gigahertz. So there's plenty of bandwidth here, especially for the circuits that I work on. It has a high gain, 21.8 dB, and we're going to look at what that actually means when we talk about voltage gain. And then what I like about these devices is they're all internally matched. So they're matched 50 ohms on the input and 50 ohms on the output. So you don't have to worry too much about impedance transformation since it's already pre-matched. And the noise figure is very good for this technology. And these are cascadable. So I can use two or three or even more of these devices and cascade them together for increasing the gain. And the nice thing is they're already matched to 50 ohms, so you don't have to worry about any impedance matching between stages. Okay, so let's go back now to the circuit. 
We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll put this back in presentation mode. There we go. And what you can see here, this is the input, this is the output. Okay, and these are the grounds, obviously. And I'm using a decoupling capacitor, uh, or I should say a coupling capacitor for the input side. I'm using a AC coupling for the output side. And then I've got this circuit to provide the bias voltage. So we're using a 12 volt bias voltage here. We've got a filter, which is basically the capacitor and the RF choke. And then we have a biased resistor. And in the data sheet, if you're operating this at a different voltage, say higher or lower voltage, uh, there's a table in there that gives you the recommendations for these component values. So it really simplifies the design. And as I said, it's already matched 50 ohms in and 50 ohms out. So, so that's the basic circuit, the schematic. That's what it looks like. And let's take a look at the amplifier that I built. Okay, um, yeah, just to get just to get an idea of how small these devices are, this is the the test lead, the test clip of an oscilloscope probe, and you can see how small the transistor really is by comparison. Okay, if we take a look at the circuit that I designed and built, this is the input capacitor here. This is the output capacitor. This is the biasing circuit. And if you look really close in the middle there, you can see the, the transistor right here. Okay, so that's basically what it looks like. Um, this half of the board is a different circuit that I'll be using to demonstrate um, you know, in future videos. So you'll be able to get a better idea um, you know, how the superheterodyne receiver works, and uh, we'll be looking at each of those circuits as we as we go along here in future future parts. So so that's what the circuit looks like, and we're gonna we're gonna actually take a look at the waveforms and see um, exactly how this works and do some gain measurements, etc. So here we can see. This is channel one, this is channel two, this is my input signal, okay, and as I mentioned, we're using a 10 megahertz signal there. Uh, of course, you can operate this at much higher frequencies, but you can see channel one, channel two, the input is fluctuating somewhere between 240 and 260 millivolts, so we'll call that 250, and the output is around 2.5 volts. So to calculate gain, it's just the output voltage divided by the input voltage. So we'll call that 10. We have a gain of about 10. Okay, so now if we take a closer look at this from the spectrum, okay, we'll be able to measure the gain in decibels and see how that correlates to the measurements that we just made. So what we do here is we'll put the scope on FFT mode and we'll look at channel one first. So we'll turn off channel two. Okay, we'll turn on channel one and we'll take a look at the input signal, which you can see there. Okay, and again, we're at 10 megahertz. And I can use my cursors to actually measure what the, the decibel level is. Okay, so if we if we go ahead and move the cursor down, okay, we can measure from the noise floor, okay, which is which is here. Okay, that's the, the lower half, and then we can measure the peak, which is here. And we see about 30 decibels or so. Okay, so this is the noise floor. This is the peak. Here's my two curses. And there's the difference, which is 30 dB. Okay, so now we will go ahead and turn off channel one. We'll turn on channel two. And let me just move that up a little bit so we get a clearer look. 
at the waveform and the spectrum. Okay, we'll put this back in FFT mode. This time our source will be channel two. Okay, and here we can see if I change the time base, maybe we can get a little better look at it. Yeah, okay. So here we, we can see make some fine adjustments here as we as we measure okay we'll move the cursors first we'll look at the, the noise floor so we adjust the cursor to where we have a noise floor and then Just try to move the waveform out of the way a little bit so I can see the peak. And then we'll adjust the upper. And you can see we have about 50, 50 decibels or so here. Okay. So... Again, we're measuring from the noise floor, which is here, to the peak. So it's about 50 decibels for the output. So the input was 30 decibels, and the output was 50 decibels. So the difference is 20 dB, and that's the gain. And the spec says that the gain's around 21. So let's see what that means. Let's go back here and take a look. Let's get out of this. And there's there's a lot of online calculators that you can use to convert decibel levels. So if you enter in 20 dB, which I have here, okay, and you convert that. Okay, it shows us that the voltage gain is 10 and the power gain is 100. Now, some of you who watch my video have heard me say this before. Okay, this is a logarithmic scale, so it's log 10. And for power, you heard me say 10 dB is 10 times higher, 20 dB is 100 times higher, which you see here. 30 dB is 1,000 times higher. Okay. And that's true for power gain. Um, but for voltage, 20 dB, if we're looking at voltage gain, it's equal to 10. And that's actually what we measured when we compared the input waveform and the output waveform and took the output power, which is around 250 millivolts, divided the, the, the input voltage, which was 2.5 volts, and that gave us a gain, a voltage gain of 10, which corresponds here. So that's the demonstration. This is, this is the circuit. It's a relatively simple circuit to design and, and build and uh, performs quite nicely. And like I said, the advantage of this technology is it's already matched to 50 ohms in and out. So it simplifies the design. Okay, so that's the demonstration. I hope this was helpful to some RF men.